pretty good interview courtesy of Mix Mag featuring one Cheryl, 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 how you, is it how you pronounce her name? What do you say? Would you say Cheryl? Cheryl? Or Cheryl, I say I won't say Cheryl. I think it's Cheryl. Um, a really good mag, a really good um interview and cover story with Mix Mag. I love the pictures. There's a picture of her riding on a black horse with these bunny ears, um, um, woolly hat on, a nice kind of dash dashiki sort of kind of um kente whatever sort of garb on and top and she just looks really majestic and it says the following take ownership command respect cheryl is leading the pra paradigm shift in dance music and it's good to see a platform like mix mag which is quite commercial in its appeal similar to like a dj mag featuring someone like a cheryl from what she represents and the community that she's from and the music that she plays in general because some people would say these kind of platforms do tend to concentrate too much on the business techno type of people and if we are going to change um, the industry in some way shape or form you need, to, you need to have these big publications that people kind of look at to book people or to go look at DJs to feature people who are a little bit less known but also are as good or just better than the people that they feature in terms of the business techno people in order for people to have a far better options out there when it comes to DJing because at the moment it feels like it's all the same shit right same people playing at ADE same people playing at Printworks same people playing at all these places it's the same lineup being repeated time and time after again I get it because these guys and girls sell tickets but I would like a difference in kind of just the overall tapestry of who's playing and the soundscape and the just everything, the feel and the, uh, the kind of um, the kind of aura that kind of surrounds a club when you have different sort of lineups and the people that are featured in it. It always kind of adds to it. So it's good to see Mix Mag featuring her for this cover story. It says here, Cheryl has been a dance music success story that has defined the last couple of years from Wolvenstone to Paris Fashion Week to the cover of Mix Mag on an actual horse. A self-styled speed demon has taken her chance at glory, run with it at canter, bagging viral moments, industry accolades, celebrity fans, and amassing a legion of club kids who are falling over themselves to mainline um, accompanying blend, uh, sorry, to mainline her comp compromising blend of hardcore jungle DMB footwork straight into her hungry ears. And that's usually a sign of a really good English DJ, isn't it? Or a London-based DJ. That ability to kind of melt all those kind of genres maybe a sprinkling of disco so a sprinkling of techno whatever in there too that's what basically i think makes our dj strength i think in terms of man for man woman for woman we probably have the best i would say overall in terms of their ability to kind of play a whole variety of genres like you could give a whole you could put you could program a whole night of uk only djs playing from beginning playing from friday all the way until monday morning friday night monday morning and it would be flipping majestic maybe in terms of times they probably wouldn't be able to play each a set of like four to six hours like they do in Berghain but if you gave them all an hour and a half two hours to craft a set and you hand it off to somebody else those nights would be majestic because we have all so used to having heard or played in front of or play or stand in front of multi-genre DJs who are just good at their job and don't get that many accolades so imagine the ones who are really really famous I mean they're obviously going to be of an even higher standard um Da, 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 da. what she says here um, I've always felt that parts of electronic music scene are boring and safe and if I've ever had the chance I will try to change it she says da, da, da. she says here there's a big old goal there's a big old goal in front of you and there's no goalkeeper and you know why there's no goalkeeper in it because the goalkeeper's gone to for something that's been in the wrong decision it's an effort on our team's part to get the ball into the net of the wide open goal so there was this gap in which I and other people were able to fill and now we're going through the gap how are we going to destroy and dismantle the boring parts of music and put people People on their toes it takes a lot of people to be like fuck this do your own thing um eventually people are going to turn around and go what are they doing over there and that's what i've always wanted to try and do and i 100 agree and i think that's why i'm really a big fan of um what's that collective called i think it's called howl at the moment that i've kind of stumbled across on instagram they do some obviously great stuff in terms of parties it's mostly um queer lgbtq based um friendly sort of raves you've got obviously the guttering and the stuff they do kind of a bit you know a, a, a little bit paganist a little bit paganism inspired but you know we move they do some great stuff i think yeah, that's the one um it's a it's a party series called how worldwide they actually make if i'm not mistaken lubricant yeah it looks says here on the title it says lube and queer raves um for all genders and sexuality which is a pretty interesting pivot or pretty interesting um what they call vertical for a company right you have like an event space company maybe you do some um casting maybe you do some representation whatever it may be and then you've also got the vertical of hosting parties and then also selling lube to people who want to get down and have a bit of fun so i'm a big fan of those guys i'm a big fan of what people at Boudicca are doing i'm a big fan of what people are doing at inferno um big fan of the crossbreed crew there's another one too um fawn that 
that do kind of um, sex positive kink parties. There's so many extremely good alternative, I would say, again, it's a bad trait and maybe a bad term to kind of describe them as, but let's just, for lack of a better term, let's say the alt kind of nights that exist. And the great thing that I like about it, they're now being hosted in parties. Like for instance, there was a cross made at Fabric, um, the How was, um, sorry, the Inferno's taking place at Color Factory, which is doing great big nights. Um, there was something else happened. I don't know, but they're doing them in the venues where regular dance music folk go anyway. So the hope is some regular dance music folk who would only go and see people play at E1 might go in there one day when they're throwing like a queer rave, might like who's playing, might like the vibe of the overall space and might want to then follow those people and become ardent fans of these DJs who probably aren't as supported as well as the other big business techno ones. Do you know what I mean? That's what you want. You want some sort of parity not even parity you want basically a level playing field that's what you want at the moment there's no level playing field at the moment it feels like the business techno lot are earning like you know 50 grand per week for their gigs and then the guys that are doing it on that kind of level are earning maybe in the high hundreds maybe sometimes a couple of thousands right but the gap is too big and i don't think the skill level is that big personally i don't think so i, I go out enough um, i dj myself and i can i can kind of ascertain where people are at in terms of their tiers or whatnot right in terms of bands or rates and whatnot from how they play and where they are and there's a lot of people who generally play in places that they probably have no right to play in or are there because of the strength of their productions or their net or whatever the reason is but in terms of skill level and in terms of if you blindfolded the audience and didn't tell them who was playing if i got somebody playing at flipping um caverners whatever pool club pool hall that doesn't exist anymore or i got a dj that used to dj at flipping tollers or dj at flipping um dawson superstore and got them to play at some of these venues they'll do just as well as the other guys and girls so i think that's what i'm liking to see i think the appetite is there at the moment people are hungry for it and of course with the pandemic and being a lockdown people just want to go out and have fun let their hair down shake their bum and just keep it rocking i love it i love it i love it we continue here some great pictures of course da, 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 da. There's something really magical about go, um, going to a techno heavy festival and just canning it and caning it. So and people are like, what the fuck is this music? And people knowing that they're going to walk away and go, I just type in some of the IDs and I found on Shazam. Um, the amount of people who come up to me after set and say, I'd never known footwork was before until I came across you. I never knew what 160 was until I came across you. And now I'm a footwork DJ. I'm a jungle DJ and all this kind of stuff. And it makes me so happy. A uh, brilliant, well done to her. Um, I don't want anyone thinking that all the music that I'm part of is going anywhere just because it's popular now oh no oh no baby my job is to make that shift um stay that shit stay exactly where it is and every festival for the year future is going to be continue and book the faster tempos and genres is my personal duty and personal but then at the same time to make sure that shit is staying yeah the faster the faster genre thing is interesting because we were seeing it a lot especially with the with the crew at possessions right they play that kind of faster tempo shit and at the moment it's kind of a bit hit and miss. Sometimes it can be really good, sometimes it can be really, really shit. But I think in general, I think what we're seeing and what I like about it, especially when it comes to the people behind the DJ, before people start standing next to the DJ, if you go back a few years and you go to channels like Luca D, um, and you go to Luca D, D right, and you go to Fra909, RIP him, the great Fra909, these guys on, these guys on YouTube used to film these um, footages of, of, sorry, they used to film and take kind of video of raves before it was kind of the thing on social media before social media even existed right early early 2000s and you see videos of like ricardo villalobos sven var luciano um you know a young steph trucks and all these people playing in these amazing tech house melodic tech house kind of places back in the day minimal all that good stuff right and what you'd realize in those places especially like Sunwaves, dc10 and other places that kind of culture behind the dj booth was all vip-ish was all a bit snobby was all a bit look at cool we are looking down at the commoners we're down we're behind the booth we get to kind of have our own drinks behind here we maybe have it we maybe get to have a little cheeky bump under the dj table and not have to go to the toilets all this kind of stuff it kind of make people feel a little bit less than there's a bit of a separation in terms of hierarchy and also the vibe was shit it kind of i thought i think in my in my opinion i think that lack of vibe on the dance floor mirrors what's going on on stage so if you look at some of those big festivals i forgot what i wanted happens in italy where it's sort of like in an open it's sort of like an open area sheltered place it's really long i forgot where it is i think it's like something kappa something i think it's even sponsored by kappa it's really long there's many people standing behind you and if you look at the crowd everyone's just standing there whistling and recording videos of the dj no one's really losing their mind and dancing so what i think i love about this hardcore or this faster bpm stuff 140 upwards you can't stand still with that shit it's impossible to just stand in the corner head nod you have to move you know what i mean you have to you have to kind of go through you have to kind of dance 
parts. And I think the great thing about possession is that everyone that's on that, everyone that's behind the booth, everyone that's standing on that stage wants to dance, wants to lose their head, wants to actually look good on pictures, wants to actually have that viral moment of them flipping, shaking their flipping, you know, abdomen um, as the beat is going, losing their mind as their flipping pupils start to dilate. And everyone kind of be like, oh my God, that's her, that's him. Do you know what I mean? People actually want that. They actually want to be seen having fun, raving, going crazy, not looking too cool and actually dancing. That's the thing I, I kind of think the lasting legacy of that whole scene, which I hope is going to continue, is that we're seeing now, I think in general, people behind booths actually having fun because you, there's no point of going behind a booth and standing in that kind of hallowed position and having that quote unquote VIP space. You're just going to stand there and look glum or look too cool for school and, you know, as you're rolling on flipping ketamine at least roll and then start kind of losing your mind. And I, and I really, really appreciate it. I think that's going to be obviously the lasting legacy that I hopefully feel with that kind of faster BPM. The last point I want to make about this whole Cheryl interview, which I like, and which, sorry, which I didn't like, was the lack of mention of the important part that that Boiler Room set played in her eventual success. Now, don't get me wrong. She's talented. She was going to be on her way anyway. She was doing the work. She put in the graft. If I'm not mistaken, she was working a part-time, a full-time job, was on benefits for a bit, or maybe she spoke about benefits I don't really know her, her story too well precisely, but I do know that she's paid her dues, right? She's paid her absolute dues. There's no denying that. But there's also no denying that that viral moment of that other DJ, I forgot his name, unfortunately, uh, bless that guy because he got a little bit of pelters at the time when it happened, right? Which I think was a little bit OTT, but still, we understand you don't know the girl rewinding back her tune is a little bit over over the top, especially what it means, the dynamic between a man and a woman. Uh, we know, we know, we know, we know. But there's no denying that that moment basically was the opportunity for her to kind of whoosh, go up and you know what I mean that that was the, that was her flipping SpaceX um starship moment right I mean on the flipping uh booster do you know what I mean going up into the stratosphere that was it and I've always believed in general people who kind of criticize people who have licks and connections and all that sort of stuff I've never really kind of despised it because I'm, I'm a big believer in you have to be good you have to be undeniable in terms of your talent in terms of your ability and your hard work but there's no denying that you need some bit of good luck some bit of good fortune some networking skills to allow you to get to the next level and then once you get to the next level you have to then show and prove so for instance you're playing an opener at some sort of festival you know you're, you're sad because you're playing at flipping 4pm no one's going to be there then suddenly the main headliner is sick or did too many pills the next the, the, the day before can't come to the rave and now suddenly you've been you've been told to play the opening and to play the main set now what can you do if you're actually good and you actually rate yourself you would always had a set prepared just in case that main set came about or you wouldn't had ability to prepare it within the hours that you have in between so that once you got the opportunity you can now show and prove so that bit of luck of that person not turning up or that bit of luck of you bumping into a booker in the toilets that is what you need to obviously get the opportunity but you still need the skill to get forward so i'm not doubting her skill but let's not let's not lie that viral moment of Boiler Room is what got her in everybody's public consciousness, is what maybe, maybe got people to be fans of her in general, how she dealt with the whole issue, um, is what kind of maybe had the whole conversation about, you know, changing the landscape, the, whatever it may be. That moment was super important, but because Boiler Room is now the enfant terrible of flipping dance music because the founder is rich, which was never a flipping secret, right? That everyone knew the founder was rich, but supposedly now everyone's kind of woken up to the fact that they're rich. And because they get government subsidies or loans or whatnot, or bursaries or whatnot to allow them to employ hundreds of people, right? And they've also, I think, again, no, it's just not a defense of Boiler Room, but I just feel like there's not enough respect put on their name. Like legitimately, they are the ones who kind of, popularize this kind of live streaming of dj sets right they had all types of djs on there clamoring to get sets on there even though they knew they weren't going to pay them maybe at this point you should be paying your dj especially if you're getting flipping sponsorships by fucking red bull and shit right pay your djs at least but regardless of the, of the fact they've done more good i think for the dance music scene in general than bad they've launched people's careers i look at people like a cheryl i look at people like a jada g with that kind of viral uh, moment and uh, of a clip that she played i think a deck mantle i look at people even like um um oh what's his name man uh david vunk right do you remember do you know that guy he's like a he's like a i think he's a dutch dj and he plays a lot of places like dick mantle and whatnot but he's got loads of viral moments of him playing in places and being all like scatty and sweating and shit and like you know twiddling his fingers and dancing and playing really great mix of like electro techno kind of things right and he i think got a, his big bump i think from boiler room too and you know people don't put enough respect i think on their name in that respect so i would have hoped 
that she would have kind of mentioned that more. But again, maybe her career is at a point now, maybe a management too, don't want to associate her too much with that viral moment. You want to kind of progress and kind of show maturity in the scene. And, you know, you kind of want to be here for the long haul. Yeah, there's a video here of David Vunk from three years ago that's nearly approaching 1 million views, mate. There's 1 million views nearly. It's one from three years ago, Addict Mantle. And I think that might have been the one that kind of essentially gave him the hype needed to get. Yeah, there's one here with 1 million views. Nearly one million, nine hundred, nine hundred and nine hundred and seven thousand. Let's see one, one of the, one of the first year. One of the first, I, I even got a comment there. One of the first comments says here, this was the best set in the history of drugs. <laughs> yeah. Another comment here says, God, this set was insane, refreshing and truly inspiring. Any idea who's playing at 36 minutes? Another one says here, he might be completely out of his mind, but mixing and track section is still 100% on point. Equal respect, great set and performance, David. So these platforms have definitely helped people launch their careers. Of course, they've all been talented. I'm sure David Bunk was doing his thing on the local circuit beforehand, before, before anybody like myself knew who he was. Same with people like Cheryl and stuff. She's probably doing their thing in her little place that she was doing here. But let's not let's not lie. Let's say these people helped us and let's give them their props too. That's the only thing I would have liked to have seen in this article. I didn't see that much praise on Boiler Room. I saw that mention of the viral the viral clip, but I don't see that ever praise on it. And let's just confirm actually. Let's double check. But I'm pretty sure I didn't see much Boiler Room. See, look, not much much Boiler Room talk here. Boiler Room is mentioned twice, right? And that's it. And let's see clip. What what does clip is clip mentioned? Boiler Room clip duh, 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 is mentioned once. The, the, the viral let's see what viral says here there's a viral what says that before viral moments what says here viral canter the, 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 i don't want anyone thinking music yeah see yeah there we go nothing really mentioned anymore so yeah big up big up her anyway i like the photo shoot i think the current story is absolutely nang like she looks absolutely sick on this like ridiculously amazing legit like looks really 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 good i maybe would have taken off the hat maybe in general i would have taken off the hat maybe i don't like the hat on with the outfit Maybe I'll change his shirt. But in general, as a picture, like together, that just looks fucking incredible. Um, great little, much better promo pics or kind of, you know, um, is it promo pics? Yeah, you'd use for, uh, or headshots for your DJing stuff, I would assume in general. And hopefully there's a couple of close-ups that you can use for lineup pictures. But yeah, look at that coat with um, that horse there in the background. That looks fucking amazing, man. Really, really great pictures. So yeah, big up her. Um, more success, more blessings. Keep it moving. You know, it's good to see um, different folk are out there doing the bits doing the bits.